Hi, I am Jan Stoneman, and today I wanted to talk about AWS IAM variables, Amazon Web Services Identity and Access Management Management variables. And forgive me for these crabs in the background. We happen to be in an Airbnb near the coast today, so I guess there are lobsters on the walls. Forgive me if the camera slides. I don't have my tripod with me. The reason I want to make this video today is because I came across some code the other day at a customer's, and I saw for each single user in the CloudFormation template, there was an inline policy that was exactly the same with the only difference being the username specified in the resource. So you had basically these 20 odd lines of code repeated over and over again with the only thing different being that you had Sally Jane in one and then, you know, Tom Smith in another. And I thought to myself, wow, we could save so much code and complexity and make this code easier to manage by having this just one time and an IAM variable. And this is such a common approach. I've seen it across many customers and I've uh, seen it in the documentation, but uh, the customer hadn't heard of it and had an engineer try it out and it didn't work for for them. Uh, so they thought, oh, maybe the documentation is out of date. So I want to make this video to show in 2021, this documentation is up to date. It is working. This dynamic approach to specifying the username in an IAM resource is possible. Um, and just to point out, there are many other types of IAM variables that can make your IAM code more dynamic and powerful. You can even, even have things such as the principal type, like is this a federated user? Then do this. Is it an assumed role? Then do this. So today we'll just focus on AWS username to make the point. I created two users here in this demo account, two fake users. I called one of them service and one of them Jan, and I gave give them both S3 full access just to show that these profiles do work. So if I do AWS S3 LS profile Yan, it does list the bucket one bucket is here. And if I do AWS S3 LS profile service, it is also an active user able to show that one bucket. So now, um, you know, neither of them has the permission to do list access keys yet. Oops, I wanted to give that. For example, the profile Jan does not have that permission yet. So we're going to create a policy and we'll select the JSON and we can actually just copy and paste this right in because this is a very common use case that AWS provides the code for here. So we can just paste it right in and We'll skip the tags because it's just a demo account and we'll do allow self rotation and you can call it whatever you want. Follow your company's naming conventions and then we're going to create a group because ideally you attach policies to group and add users to those groups. So we're going to have the rotator group and <laughs> probably you're going to have a like a developer group and an admin group, but uh, we're going to call it the rotator group because that's all we're doing here. And next step, and create group. So we have the allow self-rotation policy attached to the rotator group. And now let's put the yawn user into that rotator group. Now we can try AWS IAM list access keys with the profile yawn again. And this time it should work. Yes, we get two access keys. And now if I want to AWS IAM delete access key, what do I need to enter there? It says I need to enter the access key ID. So let's do that. We can enter the access key ID and we need to give it the flag at access key ID. And apparently I didn't follow the instructions, access key ID value. Delete access key, missing an S. So it's not authorized to perform delete access key on user null service. So maybe I need to also provide, oh, you see, I didn't specify the profile. So you see these problems I'm running into like, oh, it didn't work. Oh, it didn't work. Usually it's not the AWS documentation that's out of date. Usually it's just like a missing 
detail, a missing, like I missed adding the profile or I missed an S, that's usually where things don't work for me. So the documentation is up to date because that did work. But now let's test, you know, uh, my customer was asking me, well, if I provide that and it's the same for all users, they use the same policy, then doesn't that mean they can manage the other users' keys? So let's test that. So right now the Yan user has permissions to manage the keys of var user. And what that means is when the request is submitted, IAM says, who is var user? And since Jan is making the request, it's, it replaces that in the policy at the time of the request. So it's effectively as if the policy is resource user slash Jan. You see here it says user slash username. Well, that gets replaced with Jan if Jan is calling that. So Jan is not gonna be able to do the list access keys on the profile, on the username of service. The security token Ah, see, I know what happened. I deleted the access keys that I had stored on this local machine for Jan, and therefore Jan wasn't working anymore. So what I have to do is I'm going to reset the credentials for Jan. And um, let's see, entity does not exist, right? That is the access key I was using as I was testing. And um, you know, it might've made me think, oh, this variable method is not working, but in fact, I was just not having an access key. So this is all a demo account and I'm going to destroy these keys after the demo. So I'm going to let you see all these access keys. <laughs> now that I've added back valid access keys, this should work. And indeed it does. We get the access keys listed for user Jan calling profile Jan. And if we try to do the same thing with profile Jan on user service, we should get an access denied. Right, Let's list access keys operation. Jan is not authorized to perform on resource user service. So that is a very clear error. That is the error I was hoping to get to show that even though user Jan has permissions to do user username. What this actually means when the request happens is user slash Jan. So now if I try to do the same thing with service, currently I haven't added service to the rotator group yet, so it shouldn't work, but I'm gonna add service to the rotator group now. And now it should work. Oh, it takes a second to work and it works. There we go. So this time, I'm going to make sure I am deleting the key that I don't have stored on here. So we've got M and K, and here we have the M one. So I'm gonna delete the K one for the demonstration. And we're gonna do that with delete access keys. So again, I'm just gonna show that Jan cannot delete the access key of the service user. And indeed, since the user Jan is not able to list the access keys of user service, of course it cannot even say, you know, it, it can't find that access key. So now if I do that same operation with the permissions of user service, it has deleted that access keys. If I go back here, it should not only show that one access key. And finally, if I try to have the service user just to really drive this point home, if I have the service user list access keys on username Jan, this will also not work. User service is not authorized to perform list access keys on resource user Jan. And if I change that to service, service is able to do that on user service. There you go. So I hope that helped you to see that this is indeed a valid part of the AWS documentation in 2021, uh, in April 2021. And this is a way you can really reduce the amount of CloudFormation or Terraform you have. You don't wanna be using inline policies if you can help it. Uh, as much code reuse as possible, it'll keep your environment safer because it's less uh, prone to human error because you don't have to 
update your code uh, with individual usernames who are coming and going from your organization. One more thing for the security geeks out there who see these wild cards and think, wait a second, but this is so open, so unspecific. Well, the thing is, this is a key wildcard, credential wildcard, certificate wildcard on resource, only the resource that's calling the action. So that is narrowed down via this. So sometimes having these wildcards can actually make your code more readable. And if it's more readable, it's more maintainable and you're not as likely to skim over the details. So this way you can read it and see keys, credentials, certificates can be managed by only the user calling those actions. So I hope that helped. Please give this video a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and leave a comment below if you want me to make a video answering your current question about AWS. All right, thanks.